Let's hear from President Putin, who was speaking about the war in Ukraine a little earlier. Appeal to all citizens of different generations, ages, nationalities, ethnic origins, to unite us with this great historic Russia, soldiers, officers, volunteers who are now fighting in their posts. I appeal to my brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in the Donbass and other freed areas from the Nazi regime for the need to take urgent measures for security and territorial integrity of Russia to strive for our compatriots and to stop the aggressive aggression of all those who are using their power against us to block any independent sovereign state which clearly threats, threatens other countries from their integrity. The aim of the West is to weaken, bring down and destroy our country. They clearly speak about the fact that in 1991 they were able to bring about the collapse of the Soviet Union. Now they want to bring about the collapse of Russia, the deadly enemy. And they have had these plans for a long time with their attacking infrastructure they have brought about with their weapons for decades threatening Russia and above all Ukraine with their anti-Russian plans and threatening war with our country in 2014 using the armed forces they organized a genocide a blockade and refused to recognize the power the government and after with this regime has virtually refused any peaceful settlement in Donbass then there's a threat of nuclear weapons, which is absolutely not okay. And that would be inevitable, which would then have led to an attack on Russian Crimea. So this decision was absolutely essential. And the main aim is of freeing all the territories of Donbass. The Lugansk, Lugansk Popular Republic has already been cleaned of Ukrainian of Ukraine. For eight years, the Kiev regime has been dragging this out for so many years. Therefore, our parts, our military units are acting in an educated, correct way, step by step, they are freeing the country, freeing villages and towns. As you know, the special military operation is one in which professionals are participating, and yet, together with them, there are volunteer formations of different ethnic origins, origins of different parts of Russia for the defense of Russia and Donbass. And the government and ministry of defense fully defined their status as well as that of the fates of status of the Donbass and Lugansk regions, the Russian army supporting, including in a medical and social way. I'd like to draw particular attention to the provision and formation in the, of technology in Donbass. The main task is to free Donbass with the 
Ministry of Defense and General Headquarters to free them from Nazis, as well as the Zaporozhye region, as a result of which there has been a fighting line which is of thousands of kilometers. I want to say publicly that following the beginning of the special operation and negotiations, the government reacted to our proposals with opposition, and these proposals, above all, concern providing security to Russia. But it's quite clear that the West was not interested in a peaceful solution and in making compromises. They just wanted to break down all negotiations. The Kiev regime carried out more attacks against with their mercenaries and with Western advisors at the same time in the strictest way Repressions were carried out throughout Ukraine against its own citizens following the armed coup of 2014. The politicians are afraid, intimidated, intimidated, threatened in barbarian ways. You, we know the majority of people of these neo-Nazis on the territory do not want to be under the yoke of this Nazi regime. And so the Lugansk and Donetsk leaders seen that the neo-Nazis had captured their areas. These Nazis who are killing people, who are being killed in Donetsk and Lugansk regions, in Zaporozhye. About half a million people, many of whom had to become refugees. Today, there are constant, there's constant artillery, there is constant firing. They attacking hospitals and schools to carry out terrorist attacks. We cannot put up with, we cannot have any moral right not to support these people. We cannot not respond and stop them from defining, determining their lives. And therefore, the Republic of Donbass and the military Zaporozhye administration have carried, decided to carry out referendums, have appealed to us, to Russia, with a request to support the regime. We are doing everything to ensure the security and independence, self-determination, and that decision about their future of Donetsk and Lugansk is one that we support. Dear friends, today our armed forces are acting on the front lines of thousands of kilometers, resisting not only neo-Nazi formations, but all the military machinery. It is essential to carry the following measures. It is fully adequate and with which we are facing. And that is for the protection of our people and its sovereignty and integrity to provide the security of the people and the freed, territory, liberated territories to support the proposal of the Ministry, the headquarters of the Russian Federation of a full mobilization. I want to say to call on the military, on the armed services, and above all, those who've carried out armed military service in the armed forces, called for military service, will have additional training 
the decree on this partial mobilization, partial mobilization, I repeat. Will be, they will be informed today by the Federal Assembly. The mobilized units will today, on the 21st of September, be informed, including the main regions provide all essential means for the military commissariat for mobilization status of guarantees to carry out our military service according to a contract. This partial mobilization will have additional measures with the leaders, managers of companies to be able to increase their production of, of military equipment in turn, or material questions, resources, financial questions must be solved by the government quickly, dear friends. The aggressive anti-Russian policy has led to this. We constantly hear threats against our people. Irresponsible politicians in the West speak about offensive weapons, the threat of offensive weapons. Such terrorist strikes, including the use of Western weapons, is something including going up to our borders, to the Kursk region, planes, ships, satellites. NATO is threatening the whole of Russia, Washington, London, Brussels, constantly putting pressure on our territory. So, Russia needs to make the following economic, cultural and all steps or consequences for this to this threat of the country, of this nuclear blackmail, not in the West, but also the threat to the nuclear power station and the words that have been expressed by certain representatives of former leaders of Ukraine about, about the threat that, Ru that Russia could apparently use weapons of mass destruction or nuclear weapons. Those who allow themselves to say such things, I want to remind them that our country also has different means of destruction different components are more contemporary than NATO and with the threat to the territorial integrity of our country, to the defense of Russia, we would certainly use all, everything, all means that we have available. The th citizens of Russia can be convinced that the territorial integrity and our independence and freedom will be provided and ensured. I emphasize this one more time with all means that we have at our disposal. And anyone who tries to blackmail us with nuclear in a nuclear way know that this can come back to them. Our historical tradition of our people is to have a peaceful leadership. Our motherland, we will do this, and we will. I am convinced in your support, confident for your support. OK, if you were just uh, joining us, we're just hearing there from President Putin of Russia giving a uh, pre-recorded televised address uh, there to the public announcing a partial military mobilization of the Russian army. Uh, we were expecting uh, an address from him yesterday, a live address, uh, where there was speculation he was going to order a full mobilization of forces, as well as unveil his plans to annex parts of Ukraine, which are currently held by his troops. Uh, but instead, that speech uh, never came. But uh, now, indeed, we have heard from President Putin there in a recorded message. Let's go to our correspondent, Gabriel Elizondo, who is live 
in Kiev and see what he makes of the speech. So announcing a number of times that this is a partial military mobilization of his army. What exactly does that mean, do we think? Well, this is certainly a very defiant speech by Vladimir Putin. And there are th three things that really came out of this that struck me. Number one, as you mentioned, uh, he, he did uh, confirm a partial mobilization of Russian military forces. He stressed that it was partial, not a full mobilization. What exactly will this look like? He didn't say. Uh, we'll have to find out in the coming hours as uh, more details come out from the Kremlin on what this means. In general, a full mobilization would mean, in general, that any uh, military-aged man, 18 to 60 years old, roughly, uh, could not leave Russia and would need to join the military. Uh, it's unclear if this partial uh, mobilization means that or not, so we'll have to get more facts on exactly uh, what this uh, means. Uh, but clearly, clearly, it is an indication uh, that uh, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, wants to ramp up the amount of military forces that he can call on to fight this war in Ukraine. So no matter how you look at it, it is definitely uh, um, uh, an escalation, if you will, uh, and a realization that perhaps uh, that Moscow needs more troops in Ukraine to achieve military goals. Now, beyond that, he did also confirm a very big headline out of this speech is that he did confirm that he is moving forward with referendum uh, votes to take place on Ukrainian territory that is occupied by Russia right now. He, he mentioned Donbass a lot, the regions of Luhansk and Donetsk. He said that the, they will uh, have accepted uh, Russian imposed officials in those two regions, their request to hold referendum uh, votes. He said that they will move forward with that. And he also mentioned the region of Zaporizhia as well. Interestingly enough, uh, he did not, as, so, as far as I could hear, mention Kherson, the region in the far south. What's interesting about this is what Vladimir Putin is saying is they're going to move forward with referendum. That's the first step to full annexation in those three regions. Two of the three, Zaporizhia and Donetsk, Russia only controls about 50 percent of those territories. So this will be very unprecedented and very interesting to see how they plan to hold this referendum uh, uh, in territory that they don't even control all of. In fact, in Zaporizhia, uh, they don't even control the regional capital of that area either. Beyond that, uh, the other thing that struck me was towards the end of his speech clearly mentioning uh, nuclear, uh, saying that uh, Russia will uh, use all of its available means to defend what he calls Russian sovereignty and Russian territory, and even mentioned, you know, the, the, the insinuating that all options are definitely on the table. Definitely that's something he's mentioned in the past or hinted at the past, but you heard it straight from Vladimir Putin's mouth right there that, that, that he is prepared to use any means necessary uh, to defend uh, what he considers to be Russian sovereign territory. And Gabriel, let me pick you up on the, the plans on the referendum uh, that we are now getting more details about. Uh, a lot of criticism from the West on that yesterday. And how exactly does he plan on doing this when the country is in the middle of the war? Well, the referendum we've heard from local officials, Vladimir Putin did not confirm these details in his speech just now, but from local officials here. Again, these are Russian-imposed officials in these territories. They're claiming that this is going to be a referendum that goes on for five days, and it will start this Friday on September 23rd. How exactly they plan to pull this off is really anybody's guess. It seems to be uh, sort of hastily put, being put together. Uh, 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 it appears that one official in Zaporizhia said that this will be a, a, a vote that will take place uh, on the Internet and by mail. But the Internet is not, doesn't work in some of the regions that they're talking about. Uh, it's, and also by mail. Mail service doesn't work in some of these regions either. Uh, again, they're, they're saying, at least from local officials, that only people that live in Russian-controlled territory... Russian military-controlled territory will be able to vote. 
highly complicated uh, how they're actually going to pull this off. Again, all three regions that Vladimir Putin just said uh, that he supports these, this referendum happening in, all three regions have fighting happening in them and frontline fighting, shelling back and forth. And in fact, in Donetsk, it's actually the Ukrainians that have been pushing the offensive into the Donetsk region, retaking some territory there. Uh, and it's the same in Zaporizhia as well. So how exactly this, they plan to pull this off is really anybody's guess. But I can tell you the view from the international community and the view from here in Kyiv is uh, that this is simply a joke. They sort of roll their eyes at this and say, and say this is, in their words, a sham. In fact, uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky said in an address last night, he just almost brushed it off as saying uh, that this is just a show and it won't change anything. We also heard from uh, Washington uh, officials there, uh, including uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Secretary of State uh, in, from the United States, calling this simply a sham and that it will not be recognized. Any referendum on Ukrainian territory by Russia will simply not be recognized. We heard that from uh, uh, France as well. Uh, so the Western community is sort of rallying around that they're just simply not going to recognize this and almost shrugging their shoulders. But with that said, this certainly will complicate the situation in Ukraine, both for the Ukrainians and the West in general, on how Ukraine will respond to this, uh, because certainly this will take the war potentially in a new uh, trajectory. Okay, good to speak to you there, Gabriel Elizondo, there for us in Kyiv.